Okay, as we all know, Michigan, Ohio State, every single time again I say that, my just stomach drops. I just get all churned up inside. I can't wait for this thing to kick off. It will kick off on Saturday at noon. It is always the time that this game kicks off. And somebody who knows about the tradition of this game and playing for the University of Michigan and also an outstanding analyst at the Big Ten Network right now joining us on our program is Jake Bud. How are you, Jake? Rick, uh, Rich, I'm in the same boat as you, man. I got that nervousness, that excitement. It just feels like time is moving slowly, but we're under 72 hours till kickoff. Yes. So I can't wait to actually watch this get settled on the field. Yeah, exactly. Um, and um, b- before we do, let's get to the most important part about this. You want to raise some money off of off of this uh, this contest for charity. I give you the floor on that, Jake. What are you up to? So, of course, with this rivalry, Rich, as you know, and as we've talked about, there's hatred, there's passion, there's a desire for each team to beat the other team. But, of course, this kicks off kind of holiday season. It's Thanksgiving and then into December. And really all that's going on right now is there's a lot of emotion, whatever you want to call it. It's emotional energy from each fan base. So about a week and a half ago, Uh, I decided to leverage that emotion for something good. And what we did is we created a website through the Boys and Girls Club of Southeastern Michigan and Central Ohio. It's called thegamegivesback.com. Obviously, Ohio State Michigan is the game. So it's thegamegivesback.com. It's a separate deal through the Boys and Girls Club where 100% of proceeds are going directly to families and children's to feed them and take care of basic necessities around the holiday season. So really the only cost we have, there's no marketing, there's no salaries, there's no profit. It's just credit card processing fees. We've raised over $50,000 already. And that tells you, that tells you, man, I think there's two things working here, Rich. One is it's great to to help a fellow human and a fellow family in need, but it's also a powerful image to have two rivals that really, of course, hatred is the word that comes up, but we can stand arm in arm in this and say, guys, we can hold this rivalry over here and still do good together. And so far, man, I mean, $50,000, this came together in about 10 days. 10 days ago, we didn't even have a website. I had no connections. We raised $50,000 in 10 days. And uh, this this is the first first year doing this with thegamegivesback.com. It'll be bigger and bigger every year. I love it. Thegamegivesback.com. Everyone should go there um, as soon as they're done watching this interview. Um, so let's just jump into it. You know what it's like to play in this game, right? Uh, oh yeah. What what is going through the minds of the, the Wolverines at present, in your estimation, Jay? You know, I, I was just thinking about this because you know they benefit from having Coach Harbaugh there throughout the week. It's just the game day suspension. He he can't coach them. So th- this week, really, I'd imagine it's an emotional time for the guys. And, and the biggest challenge is is can they stick? Can they keep energy? to be used when the, when the game kicks off on Saturday. Um, I think one of the more interesting dynamics in this rivalry, you know, I was at Michigan from 2013 to 2016, the two decades before the previous two games where Michigan won Ohio state had dominated it. And why that's important is there Ohio state was able to have like a naive type of belief that no matter what the score was in the game, they had proven that they were going to go out there and come back and they were going to win. They will be in the lead when that final whistle is blown. These last two years, Michigan has completely turned the table. Now Michigan comes into this game as the favorite and heavily picked. And they're the ones with the psychological advantage saying that they will win this game. So that that's something to watch out for, particularly with Kyle McCord, who's getting his first start in this rivalry, is how does he overcome that emotional aspect? And for Michigan, I'd imagine in the defensive meeting rooms this week, it's, hey, we need to, we need to stop the run first and foremost, and then we need to get after Kyle McCord to try to win this game on the defensive side of the ball. Well, my issue, um, you know, with Harbaugh not being there is – the way J.J. McCarthy's played the last two games. Now, obviously, Sharon Moore made a decision to run the heck out of the ball against Penn State. Uh, and, you know, deep down, I'm hoping it's not because he he knew that J.J. McCarthy was somehow physically limited. He got hurt or whatever. Um, and then we saw what happened in Maryland. I'm concerned that his spirit animal has been suspended and he's not there. You know what I mean? And Jim's not there. Now, you've You've played for Jim. You know what Jim says during Ohio State week. You know what Jim does on the sideline, certainly with the quarterbacks. I wonder what your thought on that theory might be. 
Jake. Yeah, no, you're 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 spot on, and it, it's working twofold because, of course, Coach Harbaugh has it. He he was a quarterback, an NFL quarterback, a Michigan quarterback, and you see it kind of pregame. Spirit animal is a great word when Jim Harbaugh goes over to JJ and he slaps him on the shoulder pads and pats him on the helmet. Well, when when Coach Harbaugh's gone, there that's gone as well. But also now Sharon Moore, who's the OC and the offensive line coach, he's now the head coach, so he. Can't can't make adjustments in game. So JJ is kind of having to, this is an internal thing that he's going to have to work through himself. Um, that, that, th- that's why this game is so unique and so fun though, because it, it's, it's a little bit, it's different. You know, Coach Harbaugh, I'd imagine Friday night when he has his speech with the team, that is going to be an emotional moment. That is going to be almost like a psychedelic, divine, spiritual experience for those guys. (laughs) And for J.J., you know, he's going to have to tap into that. Nothing else matters in the past. Is he beat up or not? That that doesn't matter at this point. All that matters is what happens on Saturday at 12 p.m. What is Ohio State thinking about that they can exploit, do you think? I think for Ohio State, they're they're excited to have Travion Henderson back healthy. I think both teams are excited to have their bell cow running backs back healthy, Blake Corm and Travion Henderson. The past 21 meetings, this is a great stat for you. The past 21 meetings, the winner has been the team who's ran for the most yards. So we'll talk about a bunch of stuff, but the trenches and the run games win this. So for Ohio State, I think they want to get Travion Henderson involved. He's healthy. He might be the best back in the conference, if not one of the best in the country. If they can get him involved, that's going to help Kyle McCord uh, get settled into the game. And then on the flip side, really, the, the Jim Knowles-led Buckeye defense has taken huge strides this offseason. You know, they gave up a number of explosives last year. They were about 50th in the country in explosive plays. Now they've really cleaned that up. They're top 10 nationally. So you'd imagine that, that they are going into this game with a lot more confidence. Um, the key here, just a, a big stat for you to watch out for. There's two different Kyle McCords. So you need to run the ball to take the pressure off of him, but you need to run the ball to take the pressure off the offensive line. Cause listen to this. There's a Kyle McCord with the clean pocket and a Kyle McCord when he's under pressure with a clean pocket. He's fifth nationally in passer rating under pressure. He's 110th nationally. His completion percentage with the clean pocket, 73% under pressure. He's 38% completion percentage. Yards per attempt is a great quarterback stat. With a clean pocket, Kyle McCord is averaging about 10 yards per attempt. When he's under pressure, that number dips to about four yards per attempt. So for all these reasons, Ohio State needs to run the ball, and the O-line needs to step up against Jesse Minter's defense. Because if Kyle McCord's under pressure, he is he is very he has struggled a lot this year. Jake Butt, uh, and the important part about this too, um, as I, I was talking uh, earlier on the show, is you know the 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 backdrop of Michigan success the last two years. You know, every Ohio State fan that I know is just like, well, you had our plays, so now we know why. You know, the series finally uh, had momentum swing. It's because you cheated. And um, that's what's at stake here, too, for Michigan to basically say, all right, Connor Stallions have been ripped out root and branch. He's gone. You've had weeks to figure out what your your signs and signals are. So that excuse is gone. We're just going to bow up and beat you. Uh, or Ohio State will say, guess what? We know you don't have that system anymore. And watch us have a better talent base to come and beat you and prove the last two years were as a figment of your cheating imagination. And I'm wondering what you think uh, of that sort of storyline going in. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and I think the pressure's twofold, though, too. Everything you just said is is true. But for Ohio State now, if if Michigan wins this one, you can't you can't say anything, right? And that 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 validates the past two years. For Ryan Day, you know, having not beat Michigan as good as he's been, he's judged by this game. The pressure's even more magnified because now Sharon Moore is the head coach. There'll be no excuses out of Columbus this year for that reason. All of this leads up to, I mean, this is the greatest rivalry in all of sports. There's all, everything is always under a microscope in this type of rivalry, but for all the outside noise, usually I I think, you know, Ohio, uh, Ohio state and Michigan, there's an underlying theme of respect in this rivalry that has kind of turned to true hatred. It's gone. It's gone. That's gone. I mean, Jim, this week when asked, do you respect Ryan day, you know, started talking about, you know, 
counting the minutes of uh, of preparation. It was a total word salad. And Ryan Day did the same thing in in Ohio State, but he also said we know what's gone on a lot. We know a little bit more of what's happened the last couple of years. And I don't think he was talking about the game film of why Donovan Edwards broke big ones or J.J. McCarthy broke big ones or Hassan Haskins kept hitting his head on the goalpost. He wasn't referring to that. You know, so I guess what do you think about all this? I'm sure you get asked tons of questions, not just because you're a Big Ten analyst, because you're, you know, you're you're a Wolverine from from your college days. What do you think about what Michigan gained from whatever Connor Stallions was providing, Jake? Yeah, so. I think you have to acknowledge, you know, Connor Stallions, you know, per the rule book, he broke the rules. He crossed the line. I oh, think yeah. that that's that that's anyone denying that or downplaying that kind of loses credibility. But for me, it's always been there. There needs to be some punishment for that. But the question for me, I think the important questions are is, you know, who knew about this? Did he act independently? Who directed it? Who funded it? Because it's a lot different than to say Connor Stallions acted independently versus Jim Harbaugh knew or funded it or directed it. It seems like that has been that that's been consistent that Jim Harbaugh has had no knowledge per the NCAA and the Big Ten up until this point. So I do think Stallions crossed the line. I cannot deny that it does play some factor. But at the end of the day, I also can't deny how great Michigan's football teams have been and in, in, in the coordinators. You, you can't just cherry pick the stats. I mean, McDonald is, is coordinating one of the best defenses in the NFL right now. Jesse Minter's done a phenomenal job. They've had talented rosters. So it's something. It's not everything. Jake, you know, it's great to see you here on the screen here on the show because I do see you every day, Jake, because up on my office wall at home is the moment I strolled out to midfield in the big house as the honorary captain uh, with you, number 88, right there. And I... Uh, I will never forget this moment. I will never forget this back in 2016. And uh, so I, I see you every day in number 88 on my wall. Every day. Uh, those are great pictures. You know, maybe you could get, take a quick little uh, red-eye flight back to Ann Arbor yeah. because the real story was when you gave us a pregame speech oh, at yeah. practice the day prior. Yeah. I mean, you had veins popping out of your neck. You got us all fired up. It was awesome. I blacked out. I don't know what happened. <laughs> But, you know, it, although, hold on a second. It's kind of, I don't think it was you who said it, but I remember, you know, Jim uh, giving instructions to all of us before we went out for the toss and him saying, you know, if we win, we'll take it or defer. I don't know if he told us to defer or not. And he goes, if we lose, you know, we want to go this way. And I just remember going out to the coin toss thinking one of you guys had that information in your head, not me. Mm -hmm. And, I think uh, was I, was it you or somebody who came out saying, you know, which way are we going? Like if we lose the toss, and I remember thinking to myself, oh my god, like I have really only one job to do here this this week, and I I may have just blown it. I I blanked out, like I couldn't go run back to Jim and say, which way again? Did you tell me? I was in a totally out of body experience yeah. when that happened. You know, I can't remember. I do right. remember we won the game that day. Oh, though, yeah. Rich, well, that's Central the Florida. We, we took yeah. care of business, and I was really nervous about that. But the funny thing is that they, you know, they, 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 they said the honorary captain is Rich Eisen or whatever. And I've never been, you know, introduced in front of 100,000 people before. And the cheer that came down was so loud. I just had no, I forgot what, what I just took my cap off like I was, you know, yeah. just waving to the crowd. I just don't know what the, why that came over me. And I remember, I chose which direction to go in. And I thought to myself, oh my God, I'm going to blow this. Like I'm going to go back and Harbaugh's going to rip me a new one. And I remember he had his hands on his knees and he was just locked in to the day game. And he just looks at me and goes, Hey, nice ovation is what he said to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, that sounds exactly like what he would say in that moment. too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was great. It was a great day, Jake. And it was a great time. And I, I appreciate you coming on here one more time the uh, website for everybody it, to go donate. It, it's the game gives back.com donate to Columbus. If you're uh, Ohio state fans donate to Michigan. If you're Michigan fans, we're leveraging that rivalry for good. You're the man Jake. Have a great time. Uh, let's chat again down the road. All right, Rich. Thank you so much. You got it. That's Jake, Butt right here from the big 10 network on the rich Eisen show.